Hi everyone, let's look at the counter encodings problem today. So given a string, uh, given an input string like this, we want to count the number of encodings we can do using this uh, string. So here we can do two encodings. Uh, the way these encodings are done is like this. So 3 is mapped to C, A is ma uh, 1 is mapped to A and 4 is mapped to D. So you have C, A, D. Okay. And one more encoding could be C, N. How? 3 can be mapped to C and then 14 can be mapped to N. How is how is this done? This is done using this uh, mapping that we have. From 1, to, we have 26 alphabets, right? So every digit represents an alphabet. Um, uh, okay. And another example could be 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 where we have 6 encodings. So like this, given a, given a digit string, we want to compute the number of encodings for uh, that particular digit string. One approach could be a recursive one where uh, given a string like 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, I am looking at the last two digits. Okay, What I do is I will just create two more digits using these two digits. What is it? What are those digits? Those digits are basically digits which lie in the range of 1 to 26. So I will stick letters into those digits. Uh, for 1 I have A. For 21 I have U right so i'll just split the original string in such a way that the last two digits are uh, already assigned some letters okay now the remaining uh, remaining strings i have i have to deal with the remaining strings right i do the same uh, computation for the remaining strings as well so let's do it for 1 2 3 2 uh, we can split 1 2 3 2 in such a way that we can have 2 and 32 Okay, but 32 is not a valid uh, digit in it's not in the range of 1 to 26. We can't stick any alphabet here, but we can stick an alphabet here for 2. So we'll stick B here and then we do the same process for the remaining string which is 1, 2, 3. And uh, for 1, 2, 3 we look at the last two digits again and we have 3, 23 and we stick the corresponding alphabets here. Uh, so we do the same process for 12 we do for 1 and so on okay let's go back uh, and do the complete the recursive call here so the number of encodings for an empty string will be 1 and number of encodings for 1 is equal to number of encodings for an empty string so that will be 1 number of encodings for 12 uh, is number of encodings for 1 and number of encodings for an empty string. So this will be 1 plus 1. This is 2, right? And number of encodings for 1, 2, 3 is equal to number of encodings for 12 and number of encodings for 1, right? So it will be 2 plus 1, that is 3, okay? And number of encodings for 1, 2, 3, 2 is equal to number of encodings for 1, 2, 3. Uh, which is 3 okay and now in total for this it will be 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 so we have 6 encodings for 1 2 3 2 1 so basic idea is to split the original string uh, from the last digits last two digits in such a way that uh, you stick alphabets there like uh, co collect two valid digits uh, in the range of 1 to 26 and then you'll get two remaining strings for which we you to keep doing the same process okay uh, along the at the end you gather up all the counts and then at the end you get the the number of encodings for the given given particular given digit string this is how the recurs recursive relation looks like uh, so given a message of length n look at the last digit okay if it is greater than 0 then uh, do a recursive call to the trimmed uh, trimmed message uh, and then also look at the last two digits if those two digits form a number which is in the range of 1 to 26 then do a recursive call on the trimmed message of uh, of length n minus 2 okay that's the recursive call for this However, the problem with this approach is we are doing a lot of recomputations. So we are recomputing here, then we are recomputing here. Uh, I don't think this is a good idea. We will uh, end up doing an exponential uh, amount of work. 
let's uh, do this using a DP using a DP approach. Uh, in the DP approach, we have what we have here is we just <coughs> stick an array instead of a instead of a recursive call. The logic is the same. So what we do is we look at the last digit. Okay, if it is greater than zero, okay, we uh, we uh, we add the number of encodings till till that uh, substring that is the substring of uh, length n minus one and uh, we also look at the last two digits okay and see if it lies between 1 to 26 okay so if uh, if that is true then we add the number of encodings till that uh, till that length okay so that this is the same the approach is the same as recursive In, instead which we are just not doing the recursive calls that's it we'll look at the code and we can understand how uh, uh, how the DP approach looks like and how the recursive approach looks like and what differentiates them it will be pretty clear from the code it's pretty straightforward okay uh, now let's uh, let's look at the code uh, the code looks similar to the recurs recurrence relation that we looked at uh, so what we do is we look at the last digit and if we, we see if the digit is greater than zero obviously it should be greater than zero because we are we have a mapping from 1 to 26 right so a single digit can vary from 1 to 9 so see if the last digit is greater than zero if it is then we trim the message we uh, trim the message by uh, one one digit at the end and then we compute the number of encodings for the remaining string here and then <clears throat> next thing we do is if uh, if the last two digits lie between 1 to 26 th this is what the condition is here okay if the last two digits lie uh, between 1 to 26 we do uh, we compute the no, we trim the string basically we trim the string again by 2 and then compute the uh, number of encodings for the remaining string we keep doing this at the base cases with the count uh, we get the counts and then you know, we increment the counts and then it gathers up and we get the final count of uh, of the number of encodings okay uh, and that was a recursive approach only difference between the recursive approach and dp approach is in in a dp approach we have an array instead of a, of a recursive call that's it the same conditions are the same the approach is the same okay uh, uh, the code is uh, the code for the bo both both of these approaches are there in the in the box below this video please have a look at it and leave some comments and questions if you have any thank you